Now there are some small variations that I want to show you with this. And if we return back to our text editor for the moment, and we look at our JavaScript here for a second, or specifically referencing our jQuery, you may remember that there was an effect associated with the tabs UI element here, and it's set to fade. But if we return to our browser for just a second, I just want to point out to you, if you remember, we were looking at this, the demo 1313 slideshow for tabs. Well, down at the bottom, there is a link to API methods, and the API methods are really just explaining a lot more clearly how to work with tabs. And there's many, many different variations. You can look at the one that we created, but there are many other ones. And you can see that there are some graphics that you can download and use for them as well. But here is some important information talking about what the property is, what the defaults uh, are, and what the description is. Well, you'll see here we have something here called fade. Uh, excuse me, the effect, rather. And the description for that effect that we're using right now is fade. Tab contents are gradually shown from zero to full opacity. Well, there is the default, which is just to show hide, and that's not really all that exciting, so that's why we chose fade. Ajax loads tab contents from the server using Ajax, and that's a great one. You can look at that example if you're interested. But there's also slide and horizontal, and slide is a vertical sliding effect, whereas horizontal is a horizontal one. So let's take a look. If we came in here and we changed fade to slide, rather, and if we save this and then just preview that inside of our browser, let's take a look. You already saw the beginning of that effect, but check it out. See, now there's this little slide effect that's sliding our elements in a vertical fashion. And if we were to change this to horizontal, instead, we would see, upon refresh, that these elements are sliding into place this way now. Kind of cool, isn't it? Well, let's also take note of fade out speed. We set it to slow, but here you could see fade in speed and fade out speed is well anything set to zero. And as you can see here in the fade out speed, we're setting it to slow. So basically anything but zero would work for our fade out speed. And you know you could set that in milliseconds, right? Um, and many different ways. Positive value here will result in a crossfade effect, which is demonstrated here, and it'll show you just that, right? And this is the slideshow that we've been working with as well. So those are two things that I just want to, you know, make available to you and let you be aware of that and how that works. There's also support for the browser's back button. As you can see, it requires the history tool be included on your page and there's different things that you could do that as well. Initial index, which one you're going to be starting with. Rotate false, if you remember, that determines whether or not we're going back to the beginning after we've done the circle. So all of these elements here are really interesting for you to, at least they should be necessary for you to be aware of with regards to how the tabs work and there's some fun things that you can do with them. However, fade happens to be the one that I particularly like the best, so that's the one that I've been sticking with. All right, well, while we're here, let's also take a moment to examine the slideshow CSS. Now, first and foremost, let's familiarize ourselves again with what's happening. We had a header with the class called images. Within the images class, we had divs that had an IMG tag inside of them. And there was also these A links inside of the class called slide tabs. So if we come back up to the top, we'll see information about the images. There's a background, which is a gradient. Um, the position is relative, allows us to work with absolute positioning within the class called images. So by making the parent relative, we can position things absolutely. So in here, you'll see that there's a height and a width that's been defined for it. So if you wanted to change that, you certainly could. It's floating left, and the cursor is a pointer, just so that when you put your mouse over that, it'll turn into a pointer and allow you to click it. 
Also, we have the single slide, and as you'll see here, the div within the class called images is set to display none initially, and that's because we don't want them to be seen, but they do show up as soon as the document is ready. So it's positioned absolutely top left and top and left set to zero. And it too has a height as well as a font size. If I wanted to put some text in there, I certainly could do that as well. As well, you'll see that within the images, any H3s, now I don't happen to have any H3s, this is copy code, so we don't necessarily need that there. But here we have information for the slide tabs and those little circles below tabs, right? In the initial one that was copy pasted, it was clear both, but I positioned it absolutely so that we could get it so much from the top and a certain amount from the right. And that allows us, if we look at our design view here, to position it exactly over here where I wanted it, not just randomly in the middle, centered between everything else. Along with that, we also have the A tags that are inside of the slide tabs class. And as you'll see here, the real interesting thing about them with regards to the hover state and the current state, you'll notice that there is information about the background image. First of all, they're given a height value, and that's to indicate exactly the size of the circle that we want. But if you are looking at the images folder itself, and you look for the navigator PNG, as you'll see here, it is 8 across by 24. In other words, 8 on top of 8 on top of 8. And the reason that's done in this fashion is so that on hover, we just minus the value, minus 8 so that it moves up, and minus 16 so that it moves up even more to display the current class that's here. So within slide tabs, all A tags have a current, and that indicates which one is the one that's actually the active state. So that's a little bit also about the CSS for the slideshow, and you can go about making changes to these very easily if you wish. Now when we come back, I'm going to show you another great feature with the jQuery tools. And that one's going to be dealing with an image overlay, sort of like a gallery effect and a light box effect. So come back and we'll take a look at that one as well.